All right, we've done a lot of videos on this channel about the best things for beginners, like the best fish, the best plants, the best filters, whatever. One of the things we haven't done is the worst fish for beginners. So here we are. Here is our list of the top 10 fish that beginners should probably stay away from. This one's gonna be interesting because we are doing a list of fish that beginners shouldn't keep, but the first one is a fish that I kept for the first time as a beginner. But here's the thing. I wasn't alone. I started this hobby with John and he had been doing this for a very long time and he knew what to do if I messed up. If you're just starting out and you're doing this alone, I would recommend you stay away from discus for a couple reasons and none of them have to do with them being hard to keep. Discus aren't as hard to keep as a lot of people think they are. Now, I've got two very specific reasons beginners shouldn't keep discus and the first one is cost. Unfortunately, all new fish keepers make mistakes. It's part of the learning process of this hobby and a lot of times those mistakes lead to some fish dying. It's sad, but it's inevitable. If you're just starting out and you make these mistakes, it's gonna be absolutely devastating if you lose a $100 fish. Losing a fish and knowing it's your fault is hard enough to deal with. And when you add to that, that you just flushed a $100 down the toilet, it makes it so much worse. The second reason I wanna steer you away from discus is the size tank that they're required to be in. I like to keep my discus in a larger tank. And if you look around the internet, most people are gonna tell you the same thing. And for that reason, I would say you should stay clear from getting a discus for the first time because most fish keepers are not gonna start off with a large tank. Think about it. You might not wanna admit this, but when you first started and you went to the fish store and saw bala sharks, you were like, wait a minute, I can keep a shark in my tank? Come on, you know you did. It's kind of funny because bala sharks don't look like sharks in any way, but people just see the word and they're instantly drawn to them. The thing is, these quote unquote sharks get huge. Maybe not as big as real sharks, but they can get well over a foot long. With the most common size aquarium for new fish keepers being a 10 gallon, that's just not going to cut it. Don't get caught up in the name. They're not really sharks. So just stay away from these unless you're somebody that's setting up a monster tank, then knock yourself out because these are really awesome fish. Here's something that's never happened. A new fish keeper sees a black ghost knife for the first time and they're like, Psh, that's no big deal. No way. Every time someone sees this fish, they're like, oh my gosh, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's like a feather that's attached to a fish. But the sad thing is the way these fish look and the way they're marketed really does a disservice to these amazing fish. First is they're sold in small tanks and there's little clear pipes that are sold specifically for these fish. These pipes provide a place for the fish to go and feel safe, but because it's clear, you can still see them. So you see them in a small tank and they're sold with these small little pipes like this and you think they're gonna stay small, but if you think 24 inches is small, then mm. Yes, these fish are amazing. They're super unique and beautiful, but don't fall for all of it. These fish get really big and they're not the easiest fish to keep. So it's probably just best to stay away from them. I'm well aware that just saying catfish is a very broad statement because there's just so many of them. And yes, some of them are good for beginners, but unfortunately, most of them aren't. If you're just starting out and you want to get a few stir-by or peppered quarry cats or maybe a bristlenose pleco, you're going to be fine, but nearly everything else is going to be off limits. Most catfish are going to get huge. And when I say huge, I mean huge, like 20 to 100 pounds, which eliminates almost all fish keepers from keeping them, not just beginners, but it's also the fact that these fish will eat constantly. They'll eat anything they can fit in their mouth, 
and they can be downright destructive to their tanks. Most catfish are giant, messy, and destructive eating machines. And unfortunately, most new fish keepers just aren't gonna be ready for that. They're not gonna have that big tank that can accommodate them. Yes, these fish are awesome when they get big, but getting them big is a huge chore because they basically just eat everything in their path. Again, most new fish keepers are not gonna be prepared for that. So if it says catfish, just take it off your list. I'm not gonna lie, German blue rams and basically any ram in the hobby are some of the cutest little fish I've ever seen. But the problem is they can be a little bit delicate. We all know what we went through when we started in this hobby, when you're just starting to understand the cycle and how water works. Well, there's a lot of fish out there that can be pretty forgiving to this, but rams, they're not one of them. This is another fish that's appealing to new fish keepers because of their cuteness and because they stay so small. But the thing is, when you've finally gotten through that nitrogen cycle and, and all that stuff, learning how to take care of an aquarium, you're not gonna wanna get a fish that's so delicate. Just think, you walk into the room and you look in your tank and you see your cuteness laying there on the substrate from an ammonia burn. Trust me, I know this from experience and it's not fun. If you absolutely must have rams, consider the Bolivian rams. They get much bigger than German blues and are much hardier. Still not an easy fish to keep, but easier than the others. Yay, it's my first opportunity to piss off a whole bunch of fish keepers. Why is it always me? All right, look, when you see a grown flower horn for the first time, there's really only two reactions. One would be, wow, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. And the other is, oh, that's hideous. Me? I think they're pretty cool. I mean, yeah, there are some that look absolutely ridiculous, but for the most part, overall, I think they're really cool fish. There's one big reason that keeps me away from them. That reason is simple to explain by asking you a question. Have you ever seen flower horns with other fish in the tank with them? The answer is no. And if you do, it's just because the flower horn hasn't found the opportunity to kill the other fish yet. But believe me, it's coming. I've heard the story more times than I can count. I bought a whole bunch of fish. One of them was a flower horn. And two months later, all that was left was the flower horn. So if you like only having one fish in the tank and you like fish that look like deformed little alien mutants, then go ahead and get flower horns. But if you're like me and you don't like a single fish tank or you're a beginner, I would just skip these. Who am I kidding? I'll probably get one one day, but I'm not a beginner, so. are some of the coolest fish in the hobby and some of the reactions that you'll get from non-fish keepers are oh my gosh that's the coolest thing i've ever seen it's true these fish are one of the biggest conversation starters in the hobby john used to have them and whenever new people would come over and see them they're all anyone would talk about they'd ignore all the other fish and fixate on the stingrays but there's a big issue with keeping them well two actually I know this might be getting repetitive, but their reasons are, one, they need a huge tank, and two, they can be very, very fragile. And just like the discus, these fish aren't cheap. If you're gonna keep matures or anything bigger, you're gonna spend anywhere from 200 up to 5,000 per fish. Can you imagine spending that much on a fish? Like how much you would spend on a nice used car and you come home and it's dead because your nitrates were too high? We're trying to keep people in the hobby, not have them go broke and quit. When you go to the fish store and you ask the people in there, hey, what's a good cichlid to start out with? There's a real good chance they're gonna tell you convicts. Why? Well, for starters, they're really cool looking fish with those distinct black bars on their body and they don't get really big. So keeping them in a smaller beginner tank will be fine, but 
there's more to them than that. First is these fish are super mean. And second is they're one of the most prolific breeders in the hobby. I mean, they breed a lot. I'm trying not to say it. They breed like rabbits. Just like we talked about earlier with flower horns, it's not uncommon for there to be a tank full of fish and a few of them being convicts and you fast forward a few months and all that's left is the convicts. Plus there's the breeding thing. I mean, I gotta be honest, the first fish I ever bred was convicts and it wasn't on purpose. That's kind of the point. They're a just add water to breed fish and they have such huge spawns you can get overrun super quick. And I hate to be mean about it, but if you're breeding them and you're overrun with them and you take a bunch of them to the pet store to try to sell them off to them, don't be surprised if they're not interested in them. Also consider yourself lucky if the store says, I'll take a bunch of them off your hands, but I'm not paying you for them. They, they might even say, you should be paying me to take them. I mean, don't be offended. Th this is something that actually happens. However the fish store takes them from you, just consider them to be doing you a favor. I mean, we all know why koi are on this list, right? Goldfish are widely considered one of the best beginner fish. I don't necessarily agree with that, but that's not the point because koi aren't goldfish. Yes, they're related, but they're very different. The biggest difference between koi and goldfish is koi get 10 times the size of regular fancy goldfish. The problem is people think they're the same. So when someone that has a 20 gallon and is told they'll be fine to keep goldfish, they go grab a few koi and put them in there. And we all know how that's gonna turn out. Yes, if your introduction to fish keeping is building a great big huge pond in your backyard, then go get you some koi. That's awesome. But if you're new to keeping a glass box filled with water, then you need to take these fish off your list. Silver dollars are one of those fish that pop to new fish keepers because you've seen them everywhere before and the store tells you, hey, these are super easy fish to keep. It's true, they're easy, but to really do silver dollars justice, you need a bunch of them. These are some amazing schooling fish that'll all bunch together and swim as a group. If you just get two of them, you'll never get to see that. Plus, there's the next biggest thing, and that is that they don't stay the size of literal silver dollars for long. These fish can get anywhere from six to eight inches long. So you start off with a 20 gallon tank and you put eight tiny little silver dollars in there and they look really cool, but then, before you know it, they're bursting out of the tank. So don't make that mistake. In the words of the great John Bender, don't be a Neo Maxi Zoon Dweeby. You're a Neo Maxi Zoon Dweeby. So there you have it. Those are the top 10 fish that we think new fish keepers should stay away from. If you have others that you think should have been included in this list, we'd love to hear about them down in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.